there are a whole sequence of factors that have come together into something the equivalent of a perfect storm from a consumer psychology point of view. Um, so people are having their attention drawn to certain items, they're hearing that people, other people are panic buying and they're going into shops and seeing that there are spaces on the shelves and all of that tends to sort of fan the flames as it were. What we have is, is really the equivalent of a sort of a massive marketing campaign for certain items at the moment where what marketing is normally trying to do is draw people's, draw consumers' attention to products to let them know that they are there um, and to imply that they are socially desirable, that lots of people want them. Um, and the media and the stories that we're hearing and also what people see when they go into a, a supermarket is, is like a huge advertising campaign. Nobody is going to walk into a supermarket at the moment and not think to themselves, I should get toilet roll because it's in the news, there might not be very much of it around, so it becomes a product that everybody thinks about buying on every single trip. Uh, that combined with the fact that it's very conspicuous when people are buying it because it's a bulky item uh, and when it's not on the shelves means that people have a very strong sense that it is being bought by lots of other people. There are two strong psychological forces. One is the social proof that this is what other people are doing. And we see that, you know, people will join a queue sometimes just because there's a queue there and they assume people must be queuing for a reason. We see fashion trends come and go. It's just people following other people. It's what we do. And then this loss aversion, this feeling that, OK, I've heard that this stuff might be running out. If I don't act now and then I'm not able to buy it, I will really kick myself. And we know that the, the, the human mind has evolved with this tempering force of loss aversion to, to help us make, in inverted commas, better decisions, decisions that are more likely to help us survive in our evolutionary past. And what we're seeing is that, if you like, evolutionary brain played out in this particular um, set of circumstances. From a, an individual um, perspective, the short answer is no, because what I'm describing is in a sense our, our evolved brain. It's how we've evolved. It's what's worked for us over thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Um, it's, in a, if you like, our kind of innate response to a particular set of circumstances. And it's just being highlighted. It's how we behave all the time, but it's being highlighted at a moment like this. So if, if things are going to change really it's only going to happen through one or two mechanisms. One is if there is a stigmatization of people who are doing it, and that would be very hard to do, uh, and I'm not sure who would take on that role. Um, and the other it will be a regulatory or retailer response, and we've seen the retailers saying that they requesting changes to the competition rules so that they can act together to coordinate what they're doing. And, and we may ultimately see a more strong role from the government agreeing that particular restrictions need to need to come into force.